I've always liked making things. When I was in my teens, my family took me to buy a cello from a violin repairer, and as soon as I walked into the workshop, I knew that this was for me. I studied at the Newark School of Violin Making. It was a three-year course, which I finished in the summer of 1980. Since then, I've always tried to improve my skills and learn new techniques. In my earlier days, I sold a number of my instruments through the violin dealer, Rachel Douglas. She was really helpful. She acted a bit as a mentor and gave me a lot of help and advice. I always have a strong idea of what I'm going to make, so I choose the wood carefully. The purfling is the decoration around the edge of the instrument. For this viola, the central strip of the purfling is spindle wood. It's a wonderful light white reflective wood and that gives a lot of character to the instrument. There are many qualities, I think, that make a good instrument. You need to be very careful about the wood that you choose, the model that you use. It's important to make good decisions about arching and thicknessing. This is crucial to the sound quality and longevity of the instrument. The F-holes have an important acoustical function. The placement on the front, the space between the upper eyes and the angle of the shanks affects the way that the front vibrates. I like to make it appear as if they're talking to each other. To make instruments, I think you need, first of all, a good eye. You need a feel for materials. You need to be good with your hands. And very importantly, you need to be interested in music and to have a good ear. I think that all established instrument makers have developed their own style. That's derived from their personality, the things they're interested in, and also their own particular working techniques. It depends very much on what the project is. If it's a commission, I'll talk in detail with the player and find out exactly what they're looking for, the sort of size of instrument and, and sound quality that they'd like, and we'll also discuss together the choice of wood. If I make an instrument on spec, I've really got free choice about what I do. Quite often there are ideas that have been ticking over in my mind, and this is an opportunity to develop them. There are many challenges in making an instrument and I think we all have jobs that we either love or hate. One of the areas that I think most violin makers find a big challenge is varnishing, but that's something that I've actually come to increasingly know a bit more about and to now really enjoy doing. My approach to varnishing is certainly still developing. I've discovered just how tactile you can be with it. 
you can spread it around with your fingers and sculpt it as you put it on to give softness and variety to the finish. I've come to realise that it pulls the whole instrument together and gives it a visual coherence that somehow wasn't there beforehand. Over the last few years, I've been offering work experience placements to students. This has become a really rewarding aspect of my work. It's good to be able to pass on my skills and experience. I like to keep in touch with the students and I've found that in time they often become friends and colleagues. I'm always trying to refine my skills and techniques. I find that if you can work quick and efficiently with a clear idea in your head of what you're doing, then you really get a good result. I find that a lot has improved in my work with 35 years experience. Craft skills improve with repetition, just as they do with musicians and their instruments. As I've become more mature, it's been easier to form good relationships with players and with other makers, so that I'm much more open to learn from them. My instruments are owned by professional players and music students, both here and abroad. I feel very privileged. I still really enjoy my work and couldn't imagine doing anything else. My name is Helen Michichlager and I'm a maker of fine violins, violas and cellos.